Morning all, welcome to another King's Crusher Banter Blitz on Chess 24. It's a bit earlier than usual this Sunday morning, it's 9.30 here. Yeah. yeah, because Tatar's still final round clash. So I was asked to be on this earlier time, so I'm a bit more, maybe, maybe I'm a bit Morning more all. sleepy. Welcome to another King's Crusher Banter Blitz on Chess ah. 24. Let's mute that over there. A bit more uh, sleepy, but let's see, I've tried to get in the coffee. Uh, emergency coffee in the morning. Okay, let's go through the, the challenges lists. And uh, oh, I noticed it's, it's a bit stronger on average today. There's quite a few. The average opposition is pretty strong, and it starts off with someone pretty strong. Ah, uh, okay. Thanks for the warm up, <laughs> guys. Okay, thanks for the warm up. Um, King's Engine Defense. It's a three minute game. I'm going to counter gamut here. Uh, or not. C5. Uh. <clears throat> I've done the dark square damage I wanted to do. I think. Although E5 looks a bit dangerous. Uh, I don't know, am I provoking, provoking too much? Well, the e5 square looks okay now. Um, knight g4, maybe c4, queen b6. Uh, the cheap stuff on for knight f2. Uh, I'm, I'm going to open up that diagonal just in case. But also, I like the e5 square anyway. Here, the e5 square looks looks okay to plonk a knight on. All right. Try and play the pre-moves in this three minute time control. Every second counts in the three minute time control. B5, B4. Nuisance move. Oh, we're not really going to repeat there. Come on. Okay, okay, okay. We're not going to repeat there. But does that mean he doesn't like his position enough to try for a win? There's a psychological message there in that. <clears throat> okay, and if I play f6, is that terrible? My knight's holding g6, this might be more justified. I'm shielding e7. I want to play queen b4 without hassle of e7. Um, Nick a pawn over here. Knight f4, g5, winning a piece. I'm ready for knight f4, I believe. Unless, unless there's huge compensation for white, there might be. Oh, the knight's coming to over there, huh? A knight e6, okay. I've been nuisance over here. Bishop d2, there's, there isn't queen d4. Uh, there's rook b1, queen c2. Is my king in trouble? I don't know. I hope not. Queen c2, or queen over here, just to be a nuisance with the queen. There's bishop d4, I guess, held by the knight. Um, can get these pawns going. Try and cause a panic with these pawns. Oh, still, my knight's pretty good here. And that was a good knight to lose, I think. I don't know, this knight on... Okay, there's an idea of um, queen h6. If I find the check. All right. Oh, it's, I don't like just having a 10 second advantage on the clock. Um, although that's pretty scary. There's Queen E3 here. It might be very handy. <clears throat> All right. Unfortunately, that's check. Otherwise, I could play Queen takes C1. Unfortunately, Rook takes F7. This check here. <clears throat> Let's simplify. Hmm. Uh. Okay. Two rooks with a queen. I mean, 
think there's a good deal here. <clears throat> Can I get my rook in for an attack? Right, I still think two rooks for the queen is a good deal generally. In general. <clears throat> I'm getting a coordination on G2 or oh, mating that on F1 here. <clears throat> That's B3 to think about. Not running mate. Um, oh, that is a bit tricky. Oh. Okay, okay. Do I need to grovel for a draw? Because <clears throat> my rook's hanging. Let's see. 30 seconds to think about this. Oh, sorry, sorry. I couldn't resist trying something. <laughs> you only had seven seconds. I'm naughty. I'm naughty. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, I, I feel really bad now. I feel really bad. Okay, no, no, I don't actually. <laughs> I'm sorry. It was exciting. It's what you expect from three minute chess. It's an exciting start. Thanks for waking me up. But oh, I need I need some excitement to wake me up. It's like a form of caffeine. <laughs> Yeah, I, I didn't have anything there. I don't think I had anything. The uh, the A7 pawn was counterbalancing at that point. It seemed to be anyway. Maybe I'm wrong. It seemed to be. <laughs> oh, dear. Okay, so bishop B7. D five. Just try to open up this diagonal. If we lose a if I lose a pawn, I lose a pawn. It's opening up that diagonal. I think I've seen this idea anyway. It's like a martial gambit in a way. I hope. <clears throat> Probably an inferior martial gambit than usual. Mhm. Mm Why don't I protect e5 here actually with f6? That would have been a point of king h8 to play f6 without knight e3. Um, yeah, 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 that was a little bit dumb. And there's b4 now as well. I kind of got knight b3, but it's not the sort of stuff I'd intended particularly. There's bishop f3 threatening queen e5, bishop f3, queen e5. B4 does seem to be um, winning a piece here because there's no knight B3 because it takes. That's that's a shame. Mm. Yeah, and played. This, this does seem to be winning a piece. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. There's my bishop F3 idea for queen E5. That's not entirely. Terrible, because because actually the a8 rook is not hanging right now. So can I can I play this? Queen takes e5. Uh -uh. Queen takes e5. So, yeah. All right, got I got uh, the exchange here. I'm a pawn down. Not really. Can I? Uh, let's see. Queen d6. Bishop f4. Queen d7. Maybe c5 after c5. I got to get the rook off the firing line. I think in the center file, and then c5. Let's get the rook off the firing line. 
and c5 try and break down the center although there's d5 but then c4 okay there's a pawn here which might be dangerous but it opens up again the bishop um, on that diagonal let's see knight f5 there probably is terminal for me um, under the right so if it wasn't if it was possible I'm just thinking g6 bishop e5 let's just take this knight off I think it weakens um, d5 a bit the knight could be dangerous it's coming into at some point to f5 it could be dangerous um, let's see bishop takes well f5 it's possible just to improve the rooks Mm, do I do I need a pair of rooks off here? It's helping takes in an e4. If I want want to attack d5, if I do it here, there's d6. Um, what about something else? Queen f5. Just leave this pawn for a moment. Queen f5. I can't see any major discovered attacks. Mm. Pawn is vaguely dangerous. If if a rook exchanged, then there's queen d3. Um, I don't know if I can surround this pawn still, and that pawn is just going to be scooped up with king e1 to d2. So, basically, what to do? This, this, although it's the exchange up, it's looking uh, tricky. It's exchange for a pawn. These are double pawns anyway, but it's looking a bit tricky. So I try and for the back row, queen c2. Just head for the back row. Threatens queen c1 sometimes or okay queen c2 ah uh, queen queen c2 okay i i don't know i'm going to be a nuisance with queen c2 i think um although takes d7 is scary oh very actually i i should i should put that Passable under lock and key, as the Mizvich would say. Let's just put it under lock and key. This this could have been winning. I don't know. It looks as though I, I might have. Let's just take everything off here. I think this threat of taking, I can address with f6. I think to avoid the connected pass pawns, get my king to e6. Uh, so I'm hoping I can. I just do this. Uh, king to e6. And now, all right, it's uh, it's interesting, but the king's a good blockader here. Um, I can stop king c5 for a moment without d7, I hope. Uh huh. Um, am I getting into a problematic? Position. This is an outside pass pawn here. I've just noticed. But there's a potential for an outside pass pawn. If I allow king c5 and play h5 there, if I rook h8, h5 takes takes, king b6, h4. These pawns could be winning. I can't allow that, but I can swap off my pass pawn for king d6. That holds c5. I think that's better. So get this d pawn off. Kings on the, I mean the rooks on the light square away from the bishop. Oh, there's okay. There's two connected pass pawns, but I've got an h pawn asset. Uh huh. Does that give me enough time? King c5 to b6 looks very dangerous, but h2 here. Okay. I'm getting a tempo or not. Oh, let's let's think about this. Hold on a sec. Rook d6, king c7. Huh? 
if I take King D5, I've got the opposition. I'm not getting a winning pawn there. King C7, King E4, King B6, King D3, King takes, King takes. I'm not. Don't think I'm even faster there. I was just kind of like this. Face the A pawn instead. It's fragmented pawns. If I get uh, opposition position anyway, I, I should be able to scoop these pawns up fairly easy. Surely. I'm trying to avoid a stalemate. Okay. Uh, thanks, uh, Fenman. Um. Well, this time. Another strong, high-rated opposition today. And I'm wondering, d4, e4. I, I don't know. I, uh, I I'm going to lose on time thinking about it. <clears throat> All right, rook, uh, sort of wet lettuce plan is pretty quick to play. So my wet lettuce plan is is basically um, to play for b4. Although e4 wins a piece here, got a safety check. Um, I can play it like this, preparing b4 even more. So e4 um, co commits a weakness on f4. Do I encourage that, or I, I wonder? I can't play knight d5 here, stopping uh, d5 from black. So knight c2. Ready for maybe reinforcing d5, and I want to play b4, bc. Okay, b4 now. There's this idea of taking and maybe rook b7 at some point, queen b7. It's not working, I'm just looking at the vulnerabilities, knight e7, just, just to get an idea, uh, just. Um, I'm, I'm thinking there's b file pressure fundamentally. Um, how does that kind of work here? Keep this bishop on this diagonal on this one. I'll play e3. Play e3 and trying to open up things. Um, maybe the center file. Bishop h3 takes bishop g2. Oh, there's also queen h5 as a possibility. Uh, bishop h3, knight e7. Oh. Then I just do that. And there's rook b7 here for bishop d5. And queen f3 after rook c8. Um, I kind of like the pin. Um, this is a queen h5. Let's have a look at this. <clears throat> I like queen h5 and bishop e4 in this position. It's, I like going on the attack here because he's weakened the light squares, open invitation on the light squares with these pawns on dark squares. I'm wondering, bishop e4 is enough compensation maybe? Or not? Are my piece is loose over here. Bishop d2, queen b2, and bishop c6. Um, would he go for these pieces? Probably. And it's queen, is queen now. Can I just nick another pawn for a moment? This is too dangerous. <clears throat> I wonder, queen b2, bishop e4, I'm not sure. That's clever to go away from either c6 or h7. Um, where does this knight want to be exactly? Where does that knight want to be? Maybe knight e1 to f3. Right, knight e1 to f3. And bishop on c3. Knight on f3. Yeah, hitting e5, hitting e5, that's the common target. Knight f3, I'm on e5 immediately. 
I'll keep some pressure here. Queen Queen H three, just keep on the light squares. Keep on H seven anyway. I want to play knight f three on e five. Rook b three, bishop a one. I think. He's not going to sack the exchange, is he? <clears throat> he might do. I'm protecting that now. Anyway, it's a knight e5. Uh, I'm liking the bishops pointing at the king. Um, I've seen a few puzzles recently based on light square, just light square weaknesses. Um, I'm trying to do some puzzle training <clears throat> more frequently recently. Um, so light square weaknesses, you know, with pawns on the dark squares, often the subject of combinations. Um, but here, how how does he defend e5? Let's take an example, rookie eight. Okay. There's queen f5 here threatening knight e5 again. No, it's not it's not yet pinned. No, no, knight e5 is threatened. Sorry, I don't need the pin. I don't need the queen unprotected, rather. Knight, knight e5 seems to be threatened now. Okay. Mm. Put more pressure on the position. Can I go with rook c1? Mm, I don't like g4. Look at g4, particularly. g4, knight h6. Well, that is h3 possible. There's still knight h6. Oh, knight h6, unfortunately. It looks to be <laughs> trapping my queen. Oh, I'm up it. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Have I just trapped my own queen? I have, haven't I? I've just trapped my own queen. <laughs> uh, I've got, my queen's got zero squares. It's really got zero squares. <laughs> uh, my ch my chance, I think, now is rook c5 and, and knight e5 if I don't get mated. That's the only thing I can see. King g2, rook c5, knight e5. Let's try and avoid losing the bishop. Uh, rook a2, there's a check picking up the rook. Oh, there is bishop e5 here, thankfully, which gives me bishop d5. It's not all over totally as much as I um, imagine. Just a moment, because I think I've still got some uh, pressure points in my imagination. Anyway, rook b7, bishop d5. It looks scary for the king here. If I can play rook b7, then I'm getting, I'm squeezing the mating that. Oh, I mean, I'm boiling the frog. <clears throat> you know, the frog's not aware of the change in temperature. Yeah, I'm boiling the frog. So it's like weaving the mating net. It's boiling the frog. Let's boil the frog here. It's it's a it's a metaphor my brother gave me actually over the weekend. There was this puzzle I couldn't solve, and it involved rook f1 just cutting the king off a bit. And um, he said that's how you boil the frog. That you, a frog is put in water, and it, it, you raise the temperature just slightly, and it's not aware of the temperature change. It's, it would only jump out if there was a big temperature change. It's like weaving and mating that you can put you can put one or two things around um, the king. You're sort of boiling the frog. <clears throat> okay, I'm getting my material back. This back row get some more material here. Yeah, this is boiling the frog. There's, there's lines around the king here being taken. <clears throat> All right, can I play king takes f2? Or bishop e6, bishop d6, bishop g7.
Yeah, I seem to have got my material back. Yeah, okay. No, I haven't done a video on this topic yet. Boiling the frog and chat mating. Um, I'm, no cruelty to animals implied. I was a bit lucky there. I, I got the queen trap, yeah. But th there were some light square weaknesses already I was looking forward to. Um, but yeah, losing the queen wasn't part of the plan. <laughs> that wasn't part of the plan. Oh, dear. <clears throat> uh, I, I, <laughs> it makes the game more exciting, though. Uh, <clears throat> mm. Yeah, there was this Julian Hodgson against Nigel Short puzzle. Rook F1. I just tried every other candidate move, and I realised after what weren't I looking for those moves which subtly help weave a mating net. You know, they should be candidate moves where you kind of restrict slight, just gently restrict the opponent's king. Um. So uh, yeah, I don't know if that's. Like you can consider tactics like pins, deflections, decoys. Everyone knows about those. But what about just subtle king, you know, restriction? Subtle, very subtle king restriction as a sort of tactical idea. I don't know, give it a name or something. But it seems to be useful. Um, my center's collapsing here, right? Center's collapsing. This is not nice. Mm. Okay, I have to reinforce e5. I don't want this pressure on e5. Is there like bishop g5? <clears throat> actually, I think on my challenges list, there's actually someone with frog in their name, isn't there? Has he gone? <laughs> Zen frog, there is. <laughs> that would be a particularly apt metaphor for Zen frog. <laughs> okay, but anyway. Yeah. Um, okay, queen h5. So bishop g5 or knight g5. Uh, a5 just to slow things down or bishop g5? Hmm, wondering takes the crude knight g5 is h6. So how can I make this uh, at all dangerous? At all dangerous. That's the question. I'm thinking a rook sack on d5. I'm thinking rook d1, queen h4, rook d5, bishop d5, knight f6. Would try and install a form pawn. Uh, it's it's rapidly changing the position now. Still, same idea, rook d1, rook d5, knight f6. Maybe queen h6 and bishop h4. Let's try this again, rook d1. What about just knight f6? Takes queen h6, if f5, there might be a rook left, rook d4 to h6. Rook d1. Knight f6 takes rook d4. Rook d1, knight f6 takes queen h6. f5, rook d4. Not calculating text, take. Yeah. This this rook lift idea looks attractive anyway, even if there isn't an exchange sack. So I want to play like rook d4, knight f6 takes, in fact, rook g4, king h7, bishop e4 mating. Potentially, f5. Even so, even so, okay, he's stopping any rook left at the moment. Can I play rook e2 then? I want to play rook d5, knight f6. Without losing the rook on e1. Okay, my king's a bit windy here on the back row for c3 at the back row. Is, is there any chance? to um, take on d5 here, I wonder. Queen d5, knight f6 wins the queen. Takes queen h6, uh, takes mating that. Hmm. There's queen b2 for almost the back row mate. Sorry, rook b2 for almost queen e1, bishop f1. 
I have to give my king one square before I do anything else. I used to just in case as a luxury, just in case. He's doing a rook deflection to e1. I want king h2, but the same idea. I know rook d5, knight f6. So on queen d5, knight f6. Um, bishop d5, knight f6 takes takes. Oh no, hang on, hang on. Oh, that was that was a bit worrying. This pin here. I didn't notice that in those variations. That would make this not work because I'd lose the queen. But here it's working. Ah, uh, Bella. I he stopped, did stop rook d4 on rook. Okay, so we got this form pawn, which I kind of love as a theme. Let's have the form pawn. So bishop g2, queen h6, king h2. Mm, might be in trouble there. There's no bishop e4. Yeah, king e2. There might be bishop d5, rook e7, for rook f7. If rook b7, mm, yeah. What about just a rook left? King h7, bishop e4, takes, takes. Not fretting that much. What about change of plan? g4, king h7, g4, bishop g2, g5 is dangerous. It's good I'm finding this now in his time. A bit cheeky to find that in this time. Okay, bishop g2, g5. How does how is h6 defended? The form pawn is magic to me in chess. It's one of the magical things about chess. Uh, g5, queen d1. There's bishop f1. Don't have to lose the form pawn. G5 protects the form pawn. So queen d1, bishop f1. Form pawn wins. Queen g7. Oh, a bit tactical. But yeah, I like the pieces around the king. It's um, okay, Kramnik student. Okay. Um, I don't know what to play. Uh, I'll try. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I might, it's my biggest. I don't know. That's 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 something that's changed this morning. I just don't know what to play on the first move. Um, mm. Or the second move, or the third move. Okay, apart from that, everything's great. Let's, let's play a normal Sicilian. A3, Queen B2, Knight A4 line. I've seen this recently. So Knight A4 traps the Queen here. <clears throat> now, I think Knight B3. Well, there's Queen E3, Bishop E2. Let's make sure I know what I'm doing here. I think I think well, there's knight g4 there, rook f1. And it gets a bit complicated. Well, just queen e2 simply if queen e3 is played. Um, because I think knight g4 is a little bit dangerous looking. Okay, it's made the position a bit duller, but okay. Now ninety four, ninety four. I'm on d six, right? Uh, <clears throat> I think bishop f three for e five. Is he weakening um, that e five square? All right. If I take uh, double pawns. Might be worth something. Try and extinguish the G file pressure. <clears throat> Bishop H5, torch on. Miss Bishop H5, 
that would have been good. F7, tying a rook down to F7 without H5, without this diagonal. Yeah, I've messed that one up. Ah, oh, no. Okay, but still though, H5 pawn's a bit of a target. Hmm. He's getting active rooks. Anytime the knight moves knight a5, what I want to do here is get rid of the bishop pair probably. I don't want to give up the e5 square in a hurry with a move like f5. Let's stop h, let's stop this, try and stop rook activity as well. h pawn might be a target for a knight maneuver. A knight to f3. Yeah, I'll subtly go for knight f3, knight e2, g1, f3. It's the only target I can see in the position. It ties down a rook. Why is he giving me more targets over here? Oh, he's going to be winning the uh, center pawn if I'm not careful. Oh. And it takes, takes, he's on the thing e5. Does that win the center pawn? Rook before this d5. Do I believe that? And do I? If I move the rook. Uh, and he took the center pawn, there's knight h4, and I'm on f5 after the exchange of... Uh, I'm going to do this. I can also take with this pawn anyway. Oh, it's knight, this knight anyway. Um, so let's see, knight takes, rook takes. If he wants to win a center pawn, it's cost of weakening f5 and d5. So let's say, knight takes, rook takes, e5. I move my rook. Say to d2, bishop takes e4, knight takes h4. Bishops get exchanged, I get into f5 there. I take some, I can take this one. There's rook h8. Is it okay? What about e5 instead? Oh, that's undoubling, but uh, I'll just rook e2 for a moment. See what's going on here. I don't want to lose too much time on the clock either. But knight h4, there's rook h8. I'll have to defend g2 to make this work. Bella, bishop g2, then try and tie rook down. So bishop g2 might be threatening knight h4. e5, there's an immediate knight f5 here anyway. Uh, taking out this threat in advance, there's knight c4. But okay, bishop g2, I might be threatening knight h4 without rook h8 hitting there. Okay, can I do king a2 and then b3 plan? So we can evict this knight. It's a very good piece. If I can evict it with b3, but a3 is then weak. About rook d3, rook c3, is then knight a3? There's rook c7. Rook d3, c3. Am I really playing for b3? I don't think I am. What about this b5 target? There's bishop f1 to try and target b5. That might make b3 work a bit better as an idea later. What about bishop f1, rook b1, b3? Hang on, could make this work. Although my king's in the wrong place, totally the wrong place for this. This is a way to get mated, I think, b3. Um, let's change the plan here. What about c3? Try and get a knight to b4. It gives up the b3 square. Maybe not such a big deal. Knight D knight E one to D three to B four. There's there's B four here hitting the rook. Oh, I shouldn't have maybe allowed that. I'm gonna get a knight to B four here. Right. Pressure on what exactly? Secure E four again. Maybe play for E five. Actually hasn't he neglected uh, H H four. 
Mm. <clears throat> no, I don't know where my king wants to be. I play for g5 here to kick this bishop away. It's a nuisance bishop. Rook g1, g5. Nope. Here. The knight can come into e3. Can I get onto the suburb with g5? I'm just asking for trouble. Mm. E5. Okay, I think any any move, any move. All right, think. I haven't got any time to think though. G5 here. <clears throat> Trying to undermine the pawn chain at least. Is it taking here? Oh, we're okay, six, mate. I didn't see it. I didn't see it immediately. Okay. Okay, thanks for the game. Thanks for the game. Yeah. That was quite rich in ideas, that position. Um, um, Azul missed. Um... G5. In fact, can I have this F file dynamic play? No. Can I play for D5? The thing is, with D5, D4, I might be puncturing um, the dark squares a bit here. So, some sort of Benoni structure transposition. If I lock down. Like D seven C five, like playing against the Benoni structure in reverse, hitting D three, F six, then Knight B four, hitting D three even more. So Knight would sort of transpose into reverse Benoni, almost. So F six, Knight C five, Knight B four. I'm weakening my light squares to do this, but it might be worth it. I'm hitting some light squares. Right, so is a5 actually a problem? It might be. Let's secure down f5 for a moment. Since it's a pawn sack. Bishop's blocked in. Okay. There's bishop a5 winning in exchange. Maybe it takes and then b6 to, to lock down. Again, the light squares lock down the bishop, takes in b6. And there's rook a4 here. No, there isn't. Like, I can just secure the knight for a moment. If I castle rook a5, rook a8 plan, double. Okay, this knight f5 or knight g6 is. Probably a bit scary. But the queen's in the wrong place to support an attack at the moment. Can I just gang up on a4? Oh, there's nice h5, there's bishop f5 there. I might gang up on a4. I'm just playing knight a4, and then knight c5, then rook a2. So knight a4. Oh, knight h6 
it's probably dangerous. And knight h5. Can I play king h7 here as a defense? Knight h5, bishop f5. What happened? The cake can eat it. So the cake is like a4, but eating it involves not getting checkmated. Uh, queen g4 now. Okay, can I play g6 to stop? To get these knights out of my king side. <clears throat> Maybe bishop g4 to provoke f3. f3, I mean, it's a permanent. Be a per Pawns don't go backwards. Bishop g4. Just lock down this diagonal. If there's a pawn there, interrupting the queen. Can I take a4 now pretty safely? Well, there's knight f5 on h6. I'm just wondering about defensive resources. h3, bishop e6, knight f5. I, I take knight f5. And then there's king g8, queen h6, queen h7. I mean, it's probably nothing to fear. I could just in advance play queen g7 here just to make sure h3, bishop d7, knight f5. I, I'm, I'm the bishop's on f5. This this can't be the case. I, okay, I'm going to take this pawn. I can have just taken and take. I I don't know the knight f5 plan or knife f5 has been fine gold. So I don't think it's working here. Particularly, I'm going to eliminate these knives. These knives on f5. I'm going to eliminate them. Okay, he's going for that. Knife f5. Played twice. Stop twice. Plan now for white. Get the queen there. To g6. Takes a while. Don't need to take f5 immediately. I can wait for queen e2. Ben Feigold apparently got the quote from a Greek grandmaster who I think I've met in real life. Um, oh, I forgot his name. I'm terrible with names. Um, okay, thanks, uh, as all missed. Um, Um okay, um I'll try Smith Mora, gamut. I had a nice over the board game on the King's Crusher channel. If you want to check out my over the board game uh this week, I had a great uh it was a nice tactical game. Uh one of my actually one of the better games so far in the over the board season. Uh I've had some scraps. I've had some, yeah, real scraps. Um, um, queen e2, rook d1. In fact, I don't know why I've put my rook on e1. I don't usually do that. But the rook doesn't belong on e1, surely. I usually put them on c1 and d1. Okay, um, but anyway, let's try this d1 and e1 just for a change. Put the bishop across to the queen like this, x ray the queen. As though e5 might be dangerous, which it probably isn't, but it blocks with knight e5, knight d4, f4 later. Probably needs to play king h1 before that. But I've seen a Tal game, Tal played the Smith Morrow like that with a knight d4 and f4 plan. So I'm going to try for that. That template king h1 f4 renews the idea of e5 king h1 f4 e5 plan. It might not be too terrible this configuration. 
Um, we'll play without exchanging off the knights, even to keep some more tension in the position. So e5 keeps. I've got good control over d5 at the moment. All right, losing that it secures c4 at least. It's blunted anyway. It's a blunted bishop, unless it was going on that diagonal. I can go. It can go on that diagonal. I'll take on d6 first. And weakens f4. I say bishop c2, bishop f4. There's queen e4 there. That's possible. Mm, so h7 and f4. Wonder what else is interesting about this knight e5 just queen h5 after yeah I think it's probably worth holding on to this light square bishop so knight e5 the knight's going to come to f6 soon let's imagine um, knight f6 okay Fret um no I'm not threatening f7 because of this rook I wonder if bishop h4 what does that do? G2 is a bit vulnerable. There's a rook left here with rook d3 to g3 or h3. Yeah, it gives me g3 actually by playing this. As well as trying to weaken d6 if the rook goes away from d6. So rook d3 to g3 or a3. I'm wondering. Rook h3 looks like a Morozovich rook uh, poised for some sort of attacking, naughty attacking scheme. Bishop h7, Bishop e7, takes an escape square out. I'm going to take this knight. Oh, it seems pretty solid here. And b2 is vulnerable. I'm going to take Bishop back to b3 for a moment. Just protect b2. He wants to take on e5. I need to undermine this chain somehow. Probably need a pawn to do that. Need the h pawn, h4, h5. Things are in the way here. Unless I've got a peace sack, this chain needs to be broken somehow. It's pretty solid at the moment. There's knight e4. Does he give up the light square bishop? Otherwise, there's knight f6. I don't like that bishop pointing at my king, so I'll do this. Knight f6 would be a nice thing. Right, my back row is a bit weak here. Knight f5 is a problem, is it? And if I play g4. And I'm weakening the diagonal, but he hasn't got the light square bishop, so it's celebrating the absence of the light square bishop g4. Alright. Okay, my back row is a bit weak. As long as my queen's on e4, it's nicely in the center. Stopping the diagonal, so the yeah the knight's kind of restricted. Maybe bishop f6. I can use the h file, rook h1, bishop f6. No, uh, the center file's too much. There's also rook d4. Yeah, rook d4, queen f3. On the f7, and bishop f6 here.
Is rook f2 possible? No, it's a two committal. Let's stop uh, rook d3 for a moment. And hold e5 for a moment. Mm, hold eight, hold g1. Mm. Passive, aren't I? He's only got three seconds though. Can I survive three seconds? Mated have I with Queen G one. It was King H three. Okay. Thanks for the game. That was uh you know, I didn't seem to get an attack there. Uh, by the way, I completely lost track. Oh seriously, I've lost track of time. When did this start? <laughs> uh when, when did we start this? No, it's only been thirty minutes. It feels like an eternity. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Sorry, I am enjoying it, but it feels like ha we started at what time? <laughs> Sorry, can someone tell me when we started? Because <laughs> I don't want to crash into Tatar still. That's at 12, right? Uh, is it, and Tatar still is at, in one, one and a half hours or something. I just, as long as I don't crash into the Tatar still coverage. Okay, I think 11.30 then. Uh, uh, yeah, I just, I just don't want, that was the whole point, to try and avoid a collision. Uh, with the Tatar still. <sighs> okay. So knight, okay, bishop here, bishop g5, rook e1. I'm holding d5 for a moment. Uh, so I can just put pressure on e7, that's the target pawn. Bishop g5, rook e1, double rooks. Any a5, I think a3, just keep an eye on d5, a4, bishop a2. So I just want to target e7, so rook e1, bishop g5, rook e2, rook e1. Do I insert bishop f4? Maybe, because bishop e5 could be handy as well. Bishop e5. Slight like change of plan. Mm, I'd rather take the c4 knight, I think. Than the f6 one. Oh, that's d6 here, undermining f6. d6 looks cute. Initially, anyway. Yeah, knight d7, I take and then take on e7. Knight e8. Well, that's a real pawn now. Bishop f6, bishop f6, knight d5 wins a piece, but there's queen f6. Knight d5, knight d5, bishop g7. Alright, he stopped knight d5 then. No, knight d5, rook d5, bishop f6, I'm on the rook, and on the queen. And on knight takes, I can play bishop takes, I'm on the queen and I've damaged the dark squares. So in other words, I think knight d5 is playable. Right. 
Right, I'm hitting the queen, I'm hitting the rook. I'm right, just winning the exchange. No, I'm not. There is rook e7 here. Queen d6. And double rooks. Let's accelerate the doubling of rooks. Rook e7. I'm not material down there. Rook e7. Queen d6. Double rooks. That's queen f6. It's queen d5. Though. Bishop f6. He would be on that bishop. I'm tactically loose there of the queen d6. There's rook f7. Hold on. King takes bishop e5 check. Can I get away with that? Rook f7. Queen d6, rook f7. King takes bishop e5 check. Bishop f6, rook f6. I don't want to play this. Queen d6, rook a1. He just has bishop takes f6. On queen takes f6, sure, there's queen takes d5. But I think here, queen d6, I have to play rook takes f7. Because on bishop takes g7, there's queen takes e7. There's rook f7 here. Hitting the queen. There's also doubling rooks as possible here. I think rook f7, bishop f6 though. Which might mean doubling rooks is stronger. There's no rook d4 for a moment. If bishop f6, queen f6, rook d4. There's rook e8. It takes takes a take on d4. I think here rook a e1 stronger. For that reason. Am I wrong? Wrong. Didn't see that one, did I? Hmm. <laughs> My pets. <laughs> oh. Rook F seven, maybe. I'm just the bishop down, aren't I? Oh no, I'm just the bishop down. Oh crikey, he just takes and he's a bishop up. If he wants, oh man, that all went wrong. That all went wrong. That was going so well. So what's the damage situation? Let me have that pawn. Okay. Two to one here. Try make use of. Problem with tactics. Miss one thing, you're dead. Um.
Uh, uh, there goes all my pawns. Sorry, it has to be a date time when, or whatever. If I can save it on time, on the clock, I, tactical disaster in this game. Sorry, we'll play. I completely, yeah, I totally, I thought I was on top of the tactics there. I was deluded. I was not on top of the tactics there. Blunder. But yeah, the thing is, there's a hole, there's a hole. It's better often to play positioning because you're less prone to a tactical, fatal floor hole somewhere. <clears throat> playing safe moves, but yeah, I thought it was fun for a moment. Um, but um, yeah, Rook F5. Well, Rook F5. That's a killer move. I'm trying to discourage F5. Let's play it anyway. <clears throat> mm. I've just blockaded with 94. Am I losing a piece on F3? Uh, bishop E2, or actually, Bishop mm, G2 loses C4. So, let's uh, play it like this. 94, trying to not lose F3 too quickly. So 94, just to hem in this bishop. Um, so knight e3, queen e3, rook c8, b3. I'm trying to keep this bishop. If I can keep this bishop hemmed in, I'm hoping this isn't too bad. h4, castle queen side. h5, rook g1, rook c g1, rook d g1. H, so h4 coming up. If I maintain the block, try and maintain the e4 knight for a moment. I'll still play for h4. Uh, just to try and maybe get some pawns on dark squares if g5 happens. That's h6. Oh, I, I can. Okay, I'll block, that blocks everything in. Um, hg might be just a handy uh, h file for later. I hope. Maybe. I need to play F3. I, I need to uh, make sure. Um, uh, okay, I'm not getting hacked. Um, just 
Let's see, take that. I think F the move F three is somewhat appealing here. Um to try and hold things together a bit. Uh, or A four even um Rook B eight, King A two, Knight A six. Or just rook g1, a4, rook g6, queen h3, either queen h7, king f7. Oh, uh, yeah, let's get rid of this bishop. I think it's the best piece in black's position. I, I think there's other stuff going on. If I can take that bishop out, there's knight g5, queen h3. So a4, rook g6, hg, knight g5. Um, that's blundering the queen. No, it's not. That's pinned. Um, I'll take this bishop out anyway. Mm. Or oh, f3. Maybe f3 for a moment. Alright, so if I do this, I'm trying to lock that bishop on g7. It fixes the pawns a bit. But locking the bishop on g7, um, and take and then what? King c2? There's bishop e4 there. Queen d3, is that possible? There's no rook f, there is a rook f3. Oh my god. Is there? <clears throat> Alright, think. There's King C1. Without going into Bishop E4. This is a bit grovelly, i got to say. Is there anything else I can do which is more interesting? Wondering Queen H three, Queen D two, Rook G six, H G Queen H seven, King F seven, Rook F one. It might be. There's always King E eight. I end up losing material. This is Queen G six. That's kind of interesting stuff. I'm wondering if. I should entertain that. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go for rook g6, queen h7, rook f1, queen g6, I dare, queen e6 later. Um, I'm actually covering f1 with the bishop anyway. Maybe not an immediate disaster with rook f1. So queen d2, rook g6. Um, there's rook f2 there to consider as well. I'm crashing through first, I think. So I'm just going to calculate this again. Queen d2. Alright, I'm going to play this. So queen h7, king f7, rook f1, king e8, there's queen g6. Um, I'm hoping this is useful. Pick up the bishop, surely, with check. Picking up with things with check is good news. There's also bishop e5 over here. What did I think about bishop b5? Right, there's queen d6 and bishop b5. If king f7 is, is mating, queen d6 for bishop b5. I'm glad I went on the offensive there, because I don't think having the queen's off It'd just be horrible. <clears throat> yeah, I'm glad I tried to go on the offensive there. I'm trying to defend that position. Uh, thanks for the game. Am I in? Okay. Um, I think you're a King's Engine player, right? <clears throat> like me. But I'm going to play the Sheriff system, which I'm 
We're playing a five minute game. Zero system I'm sort of comfortable with. Which I've mentioned in my over the board video. It's um when you play bishop d2 and g4 later. We'll get to it here soon. G4 and F4. So F4, G4. I think it's a few games of sure, or maybe one or two. I don't know. Actually, could be just one. I don't know. I need to check out. Uh, maybe he's played all sorts of things against the King's Engine, but F4, G4 is the idea. <clears throat> Trying to get the bishop later to f2, maybe the queen to g1. I've seen also in real life um, uh, Andrew Martin, um, Jonathan Parker against Andrew Martin, Elizabeth Masters. It was quite interesting. The queen was on g1, bishop on f2, white got in to play c5. The, the thing is, you're trying to block black's uh, attack. You're ready for knight h4, uh, rook h1, queen g1, you're playing for c5. So you're trying to block the king side, play on the queen side. So queen g1, b4, c5. We've got battery for c5. If ever king f7, this helps when c5 trying to open up this diagonal with c5, trying to maybe sack on e5 later and try and get onto that diagonal. <clears throat> So b4, c5, I'm gonna take care, what do I, mm. Mm. yeah, because <clears throat> I think knight h3 blockade, if I can bl just blockade the attack, mm. and this is a knight g4 coming. King on the queen side. I'll stop knight g5. The king on b1. <clears throat> Still playing the queen side. With c5. Later, or rook c2, bishop d3, double rooks. Can I try and win h3 out of interest? That might be a somewhat safer plan here rather than playing with c5, which is blocked. There's also knight d1 to f2 after. If I find double rooks, knight d1 to f2, queen f1, doesn't h3 drop? This bishop g4 needs to be factored in, but is a king safe enough here? <clears throat> like g1. Is bishop g4 coming in? His king's on the f file. I don't think bishop g4 is going to help too much with the king on f7. Play knight g1, rook h3. Okay, I've had to completely close down my c5 forts. But this looks attractive as an alternative plan anyway. Sometimes you've got to just go with the flow of the position. So rook h3, just winning this h3 pawn instead. It's kind of a dislocated uh, pawn away from the rest of the opponent's position. <clears throat> Do I want to take and get the queens off? Probably. What's the plan with the bishops? What's my plan? Is it still for c5? 
I don't want too many pawns on dark squares. I think this is a running pawn. Maybe my king needs to be around the f pawn. Bishop g4 might be dangerous in the future. Hmm. She's that's a target. Stop the entry of bishop for a moment. Also supports knight f2, knight f2, d3, b4, c5 plan. Yeah, and stop the king coming into the dark squares. Knight f2 here, or bishop e2. Knight f2, knight d3, b3, a3, b4, c5 plan. Can, am I going to do this? Let's test it a bit. C six later, Bishop C eight. <clears throat> no, the pawns are all on dark squares. Thanks. <clears throat> yeah. Good one. <laughs> okay, Zen Frog. Okay, Zen Frog. Mm. That was the laying of peanuts. Is that any good? My E five, F five. Mm, try it. H five, F five. Um, there might be HG, HG. I mean, there's all sorts of things, basically. I mean, there might be HG, HG, Bishop, H5, or Fool, I know. I mean, it's probably quite dangerous. Now, if he takes, I think I'm going to get the F4 square. I'm getting the F4 square here. I'm going to open up the Bishop. Take Bishop, F5. D6 is not falling off just yet, I hope. A6, rook b8, b5. There's knight c5 is not doing anything at the moment, I hope. Is, it, is there any point to this plan? A6, rook b8, b5. Um, I can't see anything else to do, so I'll play it. Rook b8, b5. Might, might activate a rook. Maybe I could have played b5 immediately there. Casting queenside here. That's a bit exotic. This looks very exotic play from white. Come on, really? Casting queenside? With my 
vicious. It looks a bit dangerous. Just sorry, at one level, it looks really dangerous because there's queen a8, queen a8, queen a1 is almost mating. Let alone the b2 pawn. There's a problem with queen a1 here after queen a8. Uh, maybe I'm imagining it. Maybe maybe this isn't dangerous. <laughs> Queen A1 is a clear and present danger. The bishop's hanging in this line from both rooks. But on top of that, <laughs> on top of that, Queen A1 looks winning anyway. Because knight B1, there's bishop B2. Bishop B1, there's bishop C3. And and the bishop's hanging on f4 here. Apart from that, everything's fine for White's position. Let's just recap. All right, it's, it's a time to to try and play accurately though. Queen a1 or bishop d3. Queen a1 looks nice to force bishop b1. <laughs> bishop takes b1. Knight takes b1. Rook takes b2 looks absolutely crushing. I, it's simple. It looks simple. It looks simple. It might not be. I'm, there might be a hole in the analysis. Mm. Or maybe not. Okay. Okay, thanks for the games. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah, castling queenside can be a bit a, a tad risky. Uh, Spain <clears throat> King's Gambit. Um. Okay. I'm sorry. So it's a bit X-rated. The stream. I know you're used to the the little positional players, the the IMs and GMs that play positionally. I'm sorry. This is a bit. This is a bit rough, isn't it? I'm sorry. <laughs> but you know, I am called King's Crusher. You know, there's a reason. There's a reason. You know, it's it's. I, I I'm a fan of all the attacking players. You know, Mrozovic. You know, Shirov. I'm a fan of all the attacking players, basically. Ah, uh, <laughs> uh, if you can get an attack, I, it's, I don't know. I find it fun. I find tactics fascinating. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. They got the, the frog got boiled, you see. How boiling a frog, yeah. You remember my earlier metaphor. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> oh dear. It, it, look, it's, uh, it's meant to be band splits. For those of you offended, I'm trying to do band splits here, right? So not everything should be taken entirely seriously. I have not boiled any frogs recently. I assure you, I have not boiled any frogs recently. It's just a metaphor. It's just a metaphor. Don't call the RSPCA just yet for for trying to check, mate. Uh, you know, subtly by cutting out king escape squares subtly. <laughs> Sorry, sorry. At the last game is going to be the giggles. I, I can't help it. Sometimes this happens to me. I'm, I'm going to try and calm down now. Ah, it's been a good session so far. It's been some fun games, yeah? But, okay. All right. All right I'm taking the queen here. I'm playing this A file. <sighs> right, 
94 Bishop G1 I want to maybe try and play on the um, the, the light squares. So uh, queen queen coming onto the light squares like a6, I think. So something like d5, uh, maybe b4, queen a4. On um, on. Okay, let's let's do this. Uh, I know that's shut down my whole plan now. B four, queen a four. Um, take this a bit more uh, gradual, gradually. I'm going to take that though. Try and open up some lines. Kick this knight back. Knights on the fifth often should be kicked back, as a general advice I've heard. And uh, actually, I had an overboard game once. I didn't kick a knight on. On the fifth back, and it was a disaster tactically for me. Uh, so that can be a menace. Those knights. I'm going to set the exchange here. If knight a5. So knight a5 takes and take and rook c4, queen a6. Um, actually, no rook c4, queen a7. I've got the bishop trained on a7 here. So queen a6, king b8, and just I need this rook or something. I need something else. Um, probably, probably needs. Uh, okay, so knight d2. Mm. Um. Yeah, I think I need some more pieces. <clears throat> Castle. And there is that like, queen c6, or what about b4 for c5? Take the bishop. Uh, face of the game, T Tully. Face of the game. Uh, uh, uh pin Ikion. <clears throat> F six G five here. Is it too risky? Tanks, Bishop Tanks, Queen H five, King D seven. I don't like this what I've done particularly. It's pretty dumb. King D seven plan. Um, I chase this guy. Well, 
Maybe bishop a6, king d7, queen e8, knight g6. Plan if I can weaken the light squares a bit. I hope that's not losing a piece or anything. Loose rook for a moment. Put the king on b7 actually. The queen side's not opening up that quickly in this configuration, it seems. If there's no immediate b4 to open the lines. Can I put my king on b7? Then queen e8, knight g6, rook g8, knight f4. All right, isn't there just knight b4 here? Takes and then bishop c4. Some if then forcing moves. Bishop c4, I'm on f1. I'm also on b3 there. That looks unpleasant what he's done to himself, basically, because b3 is hanging, f1 is hanging, g6 is only protected by the queen. Apart from that, everything's okay for white. Um, I can still play c5 to undermine the center as well. Rock solid queen side here. Or h5, g4 to undermine d4. Either way, c5 or g4 both undermines d4. H5 G4 plan. H5 Knight G5. Mm. Still, no, there's no Knight G5. Is there really a A5 possibility? All right, I think the center collapses with it. There's more opportunities to go right through the center to the king. That's my interest in collapsing the center here, just to get to the king. This queen b5 is a nuisance. Is it rook a5? Just c4, maybe. Be content with g4 with my king safe. I think I'd be content with g4. Forget about this d4 for a moment. There's a game which really impressed me, an attack from an attacking space. But again, noise about masters. There was a game, John Rogers, Australian GM, playing black French defense against Peter Salray, and he played this move King D7. It really had a profound effect on me. King D7 and just attacking on the thing. And he said after the game, well, his, he basically saw the game as a choice to attack on the queen side or the king side. I thought, wow. <laughs> I was just wow. So g3 um, is, is looking pretty dangerous. Also queen h7, rook g8. Queen g6. Now, if queen f4, I can take it from there. Queen f4, maybe rook f8. And then rook g8. Shuffle the rooks. Queen f4, rook f8. Rook g8. Yeah, I think I'm shuffling the rooks here because, um, yeah, this pressure on the G file looks horrible because the knight is holding the pawn. Just need to undermine that knight. The 
Queen hasn't got that many squares. Yeah, I don't know what white does here because yeah, it looks horrible to lose G2 and then F3 drops. All right, thanks for the game, uh, Epicon. Um, MGTOW. Um, I don't know. I'm having, I don't know, this earlier symptom is I just can't decide the first move as easily. It really is weird. Uh, I didn't know that was the case for my earlier games, actually. I haven't noticed that before until this session. Um, does he accept the gambit? No, he's bypassing. D5? What's wrong with D5? What's wrong with E5? Yeah. Sorry, mate. Sorry, mate. Sorry. I know you've, you've, he's nearly beat me on a number of occasions. To be fair, mate. Tell. It's a great name as well. But he has actually. He's nearly beat me on a number of occasions before. Uh, I've been. But this is looking um, like a piece unsound piece like even by tell standards. Um, but you never know. It could be part of the most plan, make me complacent, blunder the piece back later. <clears throat> Just as a game of psychology. On the other hand, there's this gigantic dark square bishop here. Knight g5 also hits d5 and h7 in this position. That looks pretty terminal. Knight g. What does black do to knight g5? Oh, there's queen f5. There's bishop e4 there. Queen moves, bishop h7. It looks worth doing. Uh, there's bishop f5. That's bishop f5. I still play it. Do I? Do I? I was wondering about bishop b2 first, but then I'm not supporting knight g5. Bishop b2, because then bishop f5, queen c3, but I'm not supporting g5. So anyway, bishop f5. Okay, I could be content with an exchange of queens here. Um, oh, thanks for the game, Miktal. Thanks. Um, okay. Conti yellow.
Mm. I hope I'm not crashing into Tatar still uh, just yet. Uh, last round. Um. <clears throat> This is the wet lettuce system, but he's doing a reverse wet lettuce system against me. That's really. Uh, 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 symmetrical. Oh no. The old reverse wet lettuce playing for B5. So we got this nearly kind of symmetrical ish position. Alright, okay, let me play B5. I want to keep my pawn there, it's marking out D5. I mean, the backward pawn is an achievement here to get that backward B7 pawn. It's a target coordinate target B one and G two. Okay, what about Bishop E three to A seven in this position? Isn't there Bishop B seven when you exchange after? So Bishop E seven. It's actually protected by the knight. I mean winning exchange. Is my king gonna be too loose on the light squares? That's the thing. What happens to my king after? So I win the exchange, I think. Oh, my light squares are okay. I thought he would take out the light square bishop. Hmm. Got some tactical vulnerabilities, huh? If I play f3, am I asking for bishop d4 later? Hmm. Maybe he's got a point then. Rookie one, so I don't have to weaken dark squares. Rook b8, queen b3, but queen b6. Yeah, I think maybe, maybe. Rook, rookie one, maybe, maybe. I need to be able to play queen b3 or queen a4 without the whole position falling apart. Bishop c8, knight c8. Assume knight f3 takes bishop f3. Oh, knight f3. In that position, I wonder knight c6, bishop c6. Nope. What do I do? Mm, it's knight c5 as well. Okay, nasty pin. Um, there's queen b6 here. Trying to unpin. Or at least double rooks. Oh, I've just blundered the queen. Oh. Oops. Uh, ouch. Uh, yeah. Ooh. Okay. Uh, I think um, my accuracy is deteriorating, as you can see. <laughs> how long have we had this session? Sorry. I think. Uh, how long has it been? I think we're getting to crash potential. It's been like an hour and a half, right? Sorry. I. I think my accuracy is gone. Um. I mean, going, going. But it's well played. I mean. How, how long has it been? 
sorry, I, I, I'm just concerned about, I, I, it's more strict schedule today, um, because of the Tatar still last, last round, that's why it was rescheduled earlier. Uh, let's see how many challenges, if there's not too many, well, there is, you see, there, there's always a ton of challenges, you see. <laughs> I, I don't think I've got time, I don't think I've got time. Um, Time, time start. Sorry, I, I too early for me to think about these things. What, when? Um. Uh, has it been? Oh, sorry. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll carry on. Okay, I'll carry on for a bit. <laughs> Did we start at nine thirty or nine? Nine. Uh, I am so terrible in the mornings. This is why it's good for the show to start at twelve thirty. All right. I um. Should we? Uh. Uh. I've. Uh, I don't know. Uh, I think I should. Um, it's been one hour fifty one, right? I don't know why. Why my YouTube thing says one hour seven here. It's on when I look at at the. Uh, at, at it says one hour seven. I don't know. All right. Anyway, I've got to go. I've got to go. I don't want to crash into Tatar still. Um, all right. Thanks for the games, and see you uh, next week. And I'll be more normal self. I, I should know uh, exactly what's going on a bit more. Okay. Uh, th thanks, everyone. Thanks. Uh, see you next week. All right. Cheers then. Thanks so much.